All right, we're going to discuss Henry's law, which says that the solubility of a gas in a fluid is going to be equal to some constant that we're going to call the Henry's law constant times the pressure of the gas that's over the solution. So we want to imagine uh, that we have a container. Let's say it's a sealed container. And then we have our fluid in the container, which is, you know, usually water, but not always. And in the headspace, there's a gas. We'll call it CO2. So this could be like a bottle of soda pop. And as you increase the pressure of the CO2 gas in the headspace of the sealed container, the concentration of carbon dioxide that's dissolved aqueous in the aqueous phase is going to increase. That's all that equation says. Now, the Henry's law constant is going to depend on a lot of things. For this class, we'll just keep the temperature constant, but it will depend on, on uh, temperature. It also depends on the type of gas. What is the gas in the headspace? And of course, it's also going to depend on the fluid involved. In our class, we're just going to deal with, uh, with water, but we may have some different gases that we'll use. And for example, the Henry's law constant for carbon dioxide in water is going to be 4.48 times 10 to the minus 5 molar per millimeter of mercury. For comparison, the Henry's law constant, okay, this would be CO2, the Henry's law constant for oxygen dissolving in water is going to be 1.66 times 10 to the minus 6 molar per millimeter of mercury. So with this, we see that carbon dioxide is going to be much more soluble in water, over 10 times more soluble, about 40 times, you know, 20 to 40 times more soluble than oxygen. All right, we'll use Henry's law to find out if we have a body of water that's exposed to the air. The air's up here. There's a little bit of carbon dioxide in the air. It's about 0.01%, excuse me, 0.04% of the air is carbon dioxide. At that pressure, how much of the carbon dioxide is going to dissolve into the aqueous phase of the water, any water that's exposed to air? Of course, our equation is the solubility of our gas is going to be our Henry's law constant times the pressure of the gas over the water. Well, the total air pressure, that's going to be one atmosphere. But only 0.04% of that is carbon dioxide. So this divided by 100 to get our percentage in decimal form is 0.0004. And so therefore, the pressure of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is going to be 0 0.0004 atmospheres. Not much at all. If we recall our Henry's law constant for carbon dioxide in water, that's going to be 4.48 times 10 to the negative fifth molar per millimeter of mercury. So remember, these two components are going to need to be multiplied together in Henry's law to give us our solubility. But there's an issue here. Can you see it? The pressure unit that we have our carbon dioxide pressure in and the pressure units in the Henry's law constant do not match. We got to make these units talk to each other. So I'm going to convert the pressure of CO2 in atmospheres to millimeters of mercury before I plug them into the equation. Always got to make sure your units match. So let's see, I got 0 0.0004 atmospheres. Remember how many millimeters of mercury are in an atmosphere? 760. And notice I've set this problem up so that the atmosphere on the denominator and the numerator will cancel, leaving me with a millimeter of mercury as my unit. Now I need to do the appropriate arithmetic. 0 0.0004 times 760. That gives me 0 
atmospheres of CO2 in the air. So I'm just going to pop both these in. The solubility I would expect is going to be 4.48 times 10 to the negative fifth molar of CO2 for every millimeter of mercury pressure of carbon dioxide that's in the air. And we're going to multiply that by 0.304. Oh, that should be millimeters of mercury, of course, right? Yep, millimeters of mercury. Those will cancel. An inverse millimeter of mercury is going to cancel a millimeter of mercury. And so now I take 4.48 times 10 to the negative fifth. And I'm going to multiply that by 0.304. Well, it's not going to be much. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1.4 rounding times 10 to the negative fifth molar carbon dioxide. If you'd like to think of this in how many grams are dissolved in a liter, let's remind ourselves what the unit of molarity is. Be a good, good idea to do this. 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. That capital M stands for moles of carbon dioxide per liter. And you might remember that one mole of CO2 is 44 grams. If you don't remember that, look it up on the periodic table. So let's do the math here. 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth times 44. One, two, three. Man, not even a milligram. So we'd expect. I'll notice one, two, three. I'm multiplying this by a thousand to convert the grams here to milligrams. 0.62, roughly speaking, milligrams, about six tenths of a milligram of carbon dioxide in any liter of water exposed to the atmosphere. Let's take this one step further and see how much carbon dioxide we'd expect to be dissolved in a bottle of soda pop. So in a bottle of soda pop, or a can, I guess, because my drawing skills, all right? We're gonna put a high pressure of CO2 in here to pump a bunch of carbon dioxide dissolved into the fluid so that you'll have a lot of dissolved CO2 so your pop will pop. Once again, our equation is the solubility of the gas is going to be Henry's law of constant times the pressure of the gas. In this case, pressure of CO2. In cans of soda, your PCO2 is roughly four atmospheres, somewhere in that neighborhood. So how many grams of carbon dioxide per liter are we going to get in a can of soda pop? Remember, we got what? 0.6 grams, excuse me, 0.6 milligrams of CO2 per liter in water exposed to the air. Let's see how much is in a can of soda pop. All right, we're gonna remember our Henry's Law constant again for carbon dioxide in water is 4.48 times 10 to the negative fifth, mil, excuse me, uh, molar per millimeter of mercury. Plug both these in. Oh. But of course, I got to make sure my units match. Got to make sure I do that. So let's see, four atmospheres. Want to get rid of the atmosphere, convert that to millimeters of mercury. 760 millimeters of mercury in every atmosphere. Four times 760. 3,040 millimeters of mercury. That's the pressure of CO2 in your garden variety can of soda pop. Now I can plug both these in to my equation. So my solubility of my gas is going to be 4.48 times 10 to the negative fifth molar CO2 for every millimeter of mercury. And we're going to multiply that by 30, 40 millimeters of mercury. 
Let's do the arithmetic. 4.48 times 10 to the negative fifth times 3,040. 0.14, roughly speaking, molar CO2, which means 0.14 moles of carbon dioxide per liter. And if we want to know how many grams per liter that is, of course, we're going to multiply by 44 grams of carbon dioxide in a mole. So I take my 0.14, multiply by 44, Looks like about six grams. Six grams of carbon dioxide per liter. That's a huge difference. That's a major difference. So basically, when you open up your can of soda pop, the pressure drops to air pressure. And slowly, fortunately, slowly the carbon dioxide, in a sense, leaks out. Almost all of it. I mean, you go from six grams to, you know, what is that? Like a, man, that's... 0.6 milligrams. So essentially all six grams of carbon dioxide are going to escape from the can over time.